It's Laura Eubanks of Design for Serenity with your succulent tip of the day. And it's a Sunday. Greg and I just came back from a week up in Oceanside where we did that magnificent slope. Thank you again, everyone, for all of your wonderful comments and suggestions. I feel like it was a real group effort up there. And, you know, I we were up at the ranch over Christmas and then we jumped right into projects when we got home and I haven't really been out here in my own garden to do much of anything for a couple of months and it shows what a hot mess am I right okay so this in the last couple walkabout Wednesdays I've lamented about these Fred Ives but you know I just haven't been out here to do anything with them and you know I completely get it Sometimes it can feel really overwhelming, can it? You know, when you look out at your garden and it's just, you know, I don't even know where to start kind of thing. So my method is to just start. I don't really have an agenda, but I just, you know, find an area where I, where I feel inspired or I feel drawn and I just dive in. Just being down here at this level today, oh my gosh, I've got a gov agavoides back here and kiwis back here and I don't even know what treasures lie underneath these Fred Ives and I realized that this is a really magnificent area in my garden that deserves a little bit of my attention so let's start with just diving in so as you know I am a gorilla gardener and I don't baby these plants so I'm just gonna rip these Fred Ives on out. Some of them are coming out by the roots, some aren't, whatever. Okay, oh my gosh, this I'm already feeling so much better. Look at this hot mess. Oh my gosh, so much detritus. And that, that pine tree right there is the bane of my ever-loving existence. What a dumb tree to plant six inches away from a wall. And we had a little bit of weather here while we were up at the ranch and the wind blew a little bit. And now I have pine needles everywhere. I mean, literally, they are, they're everywhere. They're even back in Bentley's toilet. I kid you not. So, yuck. But it is very, very gratifying to pick them up. So here we go. These Fred Ives were planted in this spot as cuttings a number of years ago. And they were really cute and compact and tidy. And now they're massive and hanging over the sidewalk um, and just not good. And remember, it is January, but I'm in San Diego, the land of milk and honey. The extended forecast calls for sunny skies and 70 degrees for you know as far as the eye can see so I'm not worried about manipulating these plants for those of you that don't have my conditions I hope that you can live vicariously through me oh my gosh this feels amazing okay now I have the fun of picking out all of the detritus pulling all of the little weeds seeing what is going on down here I'm looking also for ants because as we know, ants vector mealybug, aphids, and a, and a host of other pests and diseases. So if you see ants grouped around your plants or climbing up and down the trunks, look for bugs because you probably have them and treat accordingly, either organically or chemically, whatever your preference is. I see no evidence of ants. This Crassula undulata is such a winner, 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 winner in my garden. This was planted years ago. I've done nothing. I haven't trimmed it. I haven't cut it. I haven't messed with it. And look at its wonderful natural shape. If you are looking for a hedge plant or something that looks similar to a boxwood uh, in the succulent family, this is your plant. Will not tolerate hard freeze. It's very tender to frost, so you have to live, you know, where it doesn't doesn't freeze. Uh, but it'll tolerate pretty much everything else. It'll get it's a jade, so you know, it can get wet or not. If it dries out, it just shrivels up, but it bounces back with a little water. If acclimated, it can take fairly high temperatures too. 
in full sun. It's great along the coast. It's not adverse to salt water or wind. This is a really great plant. So, anywho, these leaves from Fred, here's one that you can see it's the, the leaf meristem has rooted and it's got a little tiny baby. So this would be a great one to put in a tray to propagate. Fred Ives are great for propagation because the leaves are so full of water. They do really, really well. Oh my goodness. Honestly, I could spend hours just in this, you know, like 12 inch area, meticulously picking every single pine needle leaf weed out of the rocks. But for the sake of you all, I won't. I won't uh, goof around. Let's get on with it. Gosh, these pine needles. So we were supposed to break ground in Poway next week, but that project has just been delayed. The brakes have simply been tapped. We're still going to do it, just not next week. So I'm going to be, I'm going to be here all week. Be sure and tip your waitress. Yes, I thought, why not just take you along with me? as I work my way through my garden, kind of feels like lockdown, having you with me every day while I'm just out here puttering. Um, and then on the 7th of February, we break ground in Normal Heights on a really big front yard. It's gonna be exciting, it's a big project. There is a lot to do. It's not the slope that Oceanside was, but it's still kind of a slopey yard. We're gonna be cutting in flagstone paths and I mean, there's just gonna be a lot going on. I'm also going to be working with the stupid strip. It's a big one too. And we are going to move uh, things around, rob Peter to pay Paul and make, um, make magic with basically no budget. I'm just working with what she's already got with her existing plant material, rocks and whatnot, and converting a really hot mess into something really beautiful. So I hope you'll be inspired by that. But in the meantime, we'll see what we can do to make Laura's garden look less like a hot mess. I've got, you know, a tremendous amount of weeds and detritus, but I'm also just really interested in seeing what I've got growing on. Okay, so here we are. I've got all those spreads cleaned out. My soil, you know, is nice and soft. You wanna make sure that your soil is soft so you can just tuck your cuttings back in. Okay, now I'm gonna take these big bad boys. I'm gonna trim off that stem. Also, might as well pull off these under leaves that are on their way out. There. Oh, I love this plant. This is a Graptivaria. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? So I'll just tuck this right in here, the base of the Ungelata. Now that, that stem is basically touching dirt. I don't really think I planted it, but it'll figure it out. No worries. Okay, now let's take another big one. Same thing, give it a trim. Doesn't matter where, I just like to leave enough stem that I've got something to, you know, stick in the ground. Remember what I always say, if your succulent stands up, you have done your job. So some of you have been asking for another Laura Eubanks After Dark little jam session. Um, which I'm down. I'm down. I've missed you guys. Let me know in the comments what you'd like to talk about. So we're not just staring at each other for an hour. Okay. Ooh, ah. Uh, right? Now what's going to happen with these cuttings is they're going to turn more purple. See this leaf, how it's, it's kind of a bluish green, and then these are a really beautiful mauve. This whole plant will take on more of this mauve color from the stress of having its head cut off. Now, the question is, how far do I wanna take this? And I think probably what I'm going to do, you know, when I first sat down here, I, I figured I'd, I'd just throw them all back in there, but I kinda like that. And I think 
I'm going to work around the corner there. Um, well, I can do that now. Let's loosen up the soil a bit. Because I really like those kiwis. I don't want to mess with those. But I think another Fred would be nice. Oh my gosh, looks like Bentley got after this one. Probably stepped on it. Oh, that's all right. Okay. Put that right there. Right. Okay, then I'm going to continue working my way through this bed and I will be taking you along with me. We're gonna find some really interesting plants all along this side here. I've got aloes flopping over. I've got distans everywhere. Agavoides buried under there. Um, some beautiful uh, graptivarias and echeverias and, and ghosties over here. So this is just gonna take on a whole new personality. That's one of the things that I love so deeply about the succulent garden. This garden's been going for about 10 years. Um, has it ever evolved in that 10 years time? What I wanted to create was like a secret garden. Um, even though it's a small space, I wanted it to feel contained, like there was nothing beyond the walls and just have it lush and full and vibrant with color and texture everywhere. And I'm getting there. <laughs> Still some work to do, but I am absolutely getting there. And it just becomes more and more rewarding to come out here and work all the time as the garden matures. So I hope you've had fun resetting Fred Ives with me. These guys, uh, I'm gonna trim them up. I'm gonna move them over to the garden of death for now. And as we go through this garden and start trimming and resetting and moving things, we'll see what we end up with at the end. I might have enough plants for a whole nother installation. <laughs> this has been Laura Eubanks of Design for Serenity with your succulent tip of the day. Bye, guys.